Hi everyone, here is Abukemis once again. As mentioned recently in a video that I filmed following Paul Oster's um, death, I uh, um, decided to read his latest novel, Pam Gardner, and this is just a quick review to share my experience of this very curious, uh, very tender novel. Baumgartner is structured along five fairly long chapters, with the story going in a slightly different direction from chapter two onward than what I expected reading the first, the opening chapter. At first, I thought it was going to be the story of an old man coping with his deteriorating consciousness. It reminded me of what somewhat of uh, Mordecai Rickler's Barney's version, a hilarious and heartbreaking novel about once again, an old man coping with his mind, his mind starting to, to deteriorate with his, his knowledge that he's losing his grip on his reality. Instead, after this fairly confused opening chapter, not confused for the reader, but for Pam Gardner himself, what you get is a chance uh, for this old man to look back at his life and to, to experience alongside him his existence as someone who feels very much like the archetypal Paul Oster character, someone who is at once fairly unremarkable. Seymour Baumgartner is a, uh, a philosopher and a college professor and an author, but whose existence somehow has been full of mystery and, and even drama. In particular, Baumgartner's story circles around his wife, Anna, his wife of 40 years who passed away after drowning 10 years before the book's opening. And Baumgartner is constantly reminiscing about Anna as he reads her works. She was a translator, a poet, uh, as he uh, dives into his own memories and as he is confronted with memories of their life together through various objects, various mementos around their house. Rather than Barney's version then, what Baumgartner reminded me a lot of was Philip Roth's uh, late stripped-down masterpiece, Every Man, a book that manages to, to convey the life of a person through a, a strange eagle-eye view that feels at once sweeping and very intimate, uh, condensing, as I said, an entire existence and boundless depths of feeling in less than 200 pages. Similarly, Baumgartner reduces the life of its protagonist to a very short novel that still, that, that still feels intimate, still feels as if it's establishing a connection with its character, with its protagonist, and the meaningful episodes that occurred in its life. Uh, Baumgartner, though, is much more sentimental than every man. There are passages in here about love, about uh, Baumgartner's love for his wife, Anna, that issue um, cliché and, and cheap sentimentalism, but still express what it means to share one's life with someone else and to see, to become entwined with someone else's existence, to see them as a deep source of meaning and of happiness. Baumgartner to me felt like a late album by a great band. Is it a masterpiece? No, it isn't, and it's arguably, it arguably wasn't conceived as a masterpiece, I, I suspect. Rather, it is a chance to experience the full talent of a really great artist exploring its medium and indulging in their talent for, for your pleasure. And it did feel like a pleasure and a, and a rewarding experience. I definitely recommend it to Oster fans. Uh, people who are new to Paul Oster might... Um, should probably start if you want my opinion with the New York trilogy, uh, if you if you're okay with a relatively quirky trippy fiction, or if you want something a little straighter, I suggest Leviathan, which I can't believe I forgot to mention in the video I filmed recently about my experience as an Ulster fan, because it's a great novel. It's probably one of my favorite of his of his novels, and I I do recommend it. I think it's a great entry point into his works. Thank you for watching the book, uh, the book, the review. <laughs> What did you think of Baumgartner? Let me know. And uh, thanks as always for watching the YouTube channel. Bye, everybody. <laughs>